Hello everybody, how you doing today? My name is Drew Banks from On Point Basketball. We've been bringing you the best in grassroots to the pros in Canada for several years and we're proud to bring you another presentation of Canadian basketball, working alongside Universal Hoops, the mixtape kings, as well as burgeoning documentary producers. I have a special guest with me. We're starting something real cool. Uh, you know, he needs no explanation. Uh, he's been a pioneer, he's been a trailblazer in Canadian basketball for a very long time. I want to introduce to everybody the man they call the Rev. This is the Rev on Hoops, Mr. Ro Russell. How you doing, Ro? I'm doing great, Drew. Thanks for having me uh, and doing this project with me. Uh, I'm excited to share my thoughts on basketball in Canada, U.S., and all over the world, and uh, it's going to be a really good thing. You've been doing your thing for a long time, and uh, uh, you know everybody in Canada knows your name. You came into this situation here at Crestwood Prep, and in two years, you've built up a monster, not only on the boys' side, on the men's side, but also on the girls, the women's side. Uh, talk about, you know, just getting this situation and how did this come about? Um, well, basically, uh, a friend of mine came with the idea. Uh, his son went to school at Crestwood and uh, he approached me about it. And at first, I thought, you know, I don't know, private school, how are we going to make this work? But it kind of stuck in my mind. I said, you know what, let me just go in and uh, interview and see how things went. So after some, uh, you know, thoughts, you know, from myself and and some um, prodding from some of my uh, fellow friends, I decided to check it out. And uh, I blew them away in the, in the interview and they, they showed me some great things here. And uh, the rest is gonna be history. <laughs> so Ro, I know you're very proud, of course, what the guys and ladies are doing on the court, but talk about the academic piece and how proud it is to have these basketball players on the honor roll as well. It's, a, it's very proud for me to to talk about it because, uh, you know, uh, with Marlo Davis being here and, and Patrick Shaw being uh, behind the scenes supporting the program and all the coaches that I got here, uh, Coach Nick Crank and uh, Javon uh, Herbert and, and John Waldo and all the administration, uh, Lisa, Phil, Dave, and obviously Mr. Pagano, it's, it's a great group, it's a great team to really put this together from an academic standpoint and a basketball standpoint. Recently, we just had a uh, academic ceremony on last year's uh, uh, honor roll recipients, and we had a whole host of boys basketball players, girls basketball players, and it's very proud to see that it's not just about basketball. It's also about academics, about your character, and that's what the school is all about. So to have both here is great. The school has been great. It's nationally known academically, to bring the academic piece to it as well as the basketball piece and the character piece, it's, it's all together and it makes everything complete. And I'm super proud of what we're doing at, at Crestwood and it's gonna be like this for years to come. So Ro, recently uh, you had an incredible event here. It was so successful. I was in the gym. The energy was, it was just incredible to be in this gym to see all the people that came out for the Universal Hoops Prep High School Jamboree. The top players were in the building, Elijah Fisher, Cassius McNeely, uh, you run down the line, all the players were here. Did you think that the event was, was going to be so successful? Uh, not really. I thought it would be good um, when I first approached uh, Universal Hoops about partnering up with uh, uh, yourself and Crestwood to, to do the event. Uh, you know, it was just to have basketball start a little bit earlier and see where teams are at and, you know, make it a, a, a nice event. But after a while, we're looking at each other and saying, wow, like, this is where it's at right like, now. Like, it was like a Rucker Park type of atmosphere, the energy, the athleticism, the competitiveness, you know, just the, you know, the coaching and everything was really good. We had coaches up here from the States, from Canada, we had all the mixtape guys, all the photographers. It was a great event that we're going to do annually, and it's going to get bigger and bigger. So uh, we didn't think that it would be that great, but when we looked around and saw the crowd was standing room only, we're like, okay, this is, we got something here, we got something here. Yeah, that atmosphere was incredible, just to see, um, you know, the excitement in the air, it's back. Uh, we're gonna hit up something that's uh, obviously a big thing coming up next year. We don't wanna get it too ahead of ourselves, but when I look at this list here, 
This is a possibility, folks. We're not telling kids to do anything, but we're saying it's possible we could have six or seven NBA players from the college ranks next season. R.J. Barrett, Lindahl Wigginton, O'Shea Brissett, Andrew Nemar, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Lugens Dort, Simi Shitu, and we can't forget Ignis Brazikas. I mean, when you think of these names, those are all four, four and a half, five star guys coming out of high school. Many of them are the top players or one of the top two or three players on their team. Can you see six or seven, not only or eight drafted next year, but possibility of some of, if not most of those guys being drafted in the first round? I honestly can see a lot of the guys you mentioned being drafted in the first round. And um, some guys I think will get drafted in the second round and, and, and get a good two year contract or whatever. I think there's so much talent there. Those guys are ready. Uh, they've been proven. They've played in EYBL, Go Gauntlet. They've, they've played in all these showcase events in their prep school teams, uh, prep schools in Canada and the States. They've done so much things to get them ready uh, physically, uh, mentally, and, and they all are guys with great work ethics that love to be in the gym. And now they've caught up, so to speak, with the Americans to where you know they have a great opportunity to get their name called by Adam Silver next uh, spring. So I think it, it, it's going to be historical. I can see that happening, that a, a, a multiple, multitude of guys will get to the draft and it, they'll break history. And not to mention the fact that R.J. Barrett's uh, the consensus number one overall. Uh, if he does leave uh, Duke after one season, it could be the third uh, overall, number one overall pick for Canada. So that would be phenomenal, obviously following the footsteps, footsteps of Anthony Bennett and Andrew Wiggins. So we'll see what happens. Again, um, God willing, you know, it's going to be a great draft. I think nonetheless, 2019 is going to be really special. Let's talk a little bit about the NBA right now. Uh, LeBron moving, DeMar kind of moving away. Kawhi Leonard is in Toronto, is in the six right now. And uh, people are excited, not only for the fact that he's an all-star caliber, an all-NBA caliber player, uh, but the fact of his defense. And we talked about that off air, the things he does, intangible, the deflections, the hustle, the rebounding. Um, you know, he's just like a bully out there. Like he's so physical. I think it's going to be contagious. What do you think the Raptors are going to be able to do this season? The Celtics are going to be right there. We know they're going to be one of the top teams. The Sixers are going to be uh, a big time team as well. If they can put it all together. Giannis uh, Atenakunpo, he's just, you know, he's just a beast out there. Obviously, he's going to be able to do something for the Bucks. But what do you think the Raptors are going to do, and how are they going to? Uh, is it going to be a question of chemistry for them, or what do you think is the breakdown to get them to the level where maybe they're in the NBA final, or at least get to the Eastern Conference Championship? I think definitely uh, the Raptors can get to the Eastern Finals. Um, they they've had a changing of the guards with uh, Kawhi coming in. And, you know, nothing against Demar. He did a great job for us, and sad to see him go. He um, you know, uh, wasn't too happy about leaving and getting traded, but you know, he's doing big things in, in San Antonio. And, but Kawhi brings so much intangibles to the table, as you said, and uh, I think it, it, guys will catch on. It'll be a domino effect, and uh, guys are gonna compete and hustle and fight and rebound, and they already had a good core of guys working together, and, and we had the best bench, basically, in the NBA. So I think that will continue. Right, and now with the toughness, with the the little things that count, I think we have a good chance of getting to the finals with either Boston or um, six, Sixers, or you know the way how uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are coming along. They may get in there, you know, but I think those four teams, you know, will vie for the Eastern Finals, and uh, Kawhi might be the X factor to get to the finals, you know. So it's an exciting year, and uh, Raptors fans are always there to watch and. And, and support and, and, and cheer. Uh, and so it's gonna be a very, very uh, fun year. And uh, I think that he'll bring a new brand of basketball to Toronto, that workman basketball. You know, bring your hard Old school hat. style. Yes. You know, bring your, 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 your steel toe boots and your hard hat and your lunch pail and let's work. Let's, let's, let's get after this. So it should be pretty cool. It'll be old school, like you said, and it'll, it'll be fun. 
I'm going to spring one on you, a quick one I just thought of. We see the growth uh, of the Raptors team. You have people outside watching the game in Jurassic Park. Um, they, they travel well. I mean, you go to almost every arena, um, the Raptors fans are there. How has the impact, uh, you know, how much of an impact have the Raptors been on Canadian basketball? I mean, you're in the trenches. Um, how has that helped the growth of the game from the grassroots on all the way up? I think that um, the Toronto Raptors coming to Toronto has really helped a lot with the growth of the game and the participation and the support both corporately and, and community-wise uh, over the years. I remember back in the early 90s when you know we were trying to get into the gyms and just work and guys are trying to get scholarships and guys are just trying to compete and get opportunities and all of a sudden when the Raptors came in 94 uh, then all of a sudden now the corporate started to look into it and it wasn't only about hockey basketball had some room in there too and some consideration and, and now they opened up the gyms more and now every court that you saw outside or inside there's kids playing you, you saw guys that played other sports would use basketball as cross training where before it was vice versa and uh, culture has been changed now where uh, guys believe you know, it's right in their face. They go to a Raptors game, they see LeBron right in front of them. They saw Kobe right in front of them. They saw all these world-class players right in their face, and now they're going home and say, Mom, I need a basketball. Mom, I want to hoop in the driveway. Mom, I, I want to go to play for this team and that team. And, and now, you know, the whole change of the culture has, you know, produced what we see now, where you possibly might have six to seven guys go in the draft, and so many guys have got drafted in the last few years and how many guys have been number one. So they've done a lot for what we're doing uh, with basketball in, in Canada and uh, kudos to the Toronto Raptors.